Hi Stampers, happy Friday. I was wondering what the weird stuff was floating around in the view. Maybe we have company, I don't know. You never know. Okay, just getting things set up here as usual on my iPad. There I am. I wonder if I'll get to see. Okay, I think I might get to see um, comments today when there are some being made. I'm going to give it just a second because I am making a fun card today um, that's a little bit different. And I don't want people to miss out on the directions. However, I may come back on after this video and post the measurements for you because I think you'll probably want those and it's easier to just come back and see them in writing than trying to write them down. Um, but I'll give them anyway as we go along because some of you will be watching this on the replay on YouTube. And if you don't follow my YouTube channel, um, I would really appreciate it if you did. I'm really close to um, a thousand subscribers. So um, if you could help me reach that goal, that would be awesome. So just if you're on YouTube, um, hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up, that would be great. And if you are watching this on Facebook, if you could um, share the video to your page, that would also be fantastic. I would really appreciate it. Okay, so I think um, I will go ahead and get my phone mounted here and we shall get started. All right. So here is the host code for July. So if you go over to janawilliams.stampinup.net to shop with me, when you get ready to check out, if your order is under $150, please enter this code. And um, if your order should be $150 or more, you would be a hostess and earn goodies so don't put this code in in that case because you want to earn your hostess credits and get free stuff okay and here is the address to where you can shop and one more thing about that this month is a bonus um Bonus shopping month, I think that's what it's called, sorry. So for every $50 you spend, you will get a coupon code sent to your email. So um, be sure to look for that and don't lose that code because you can spend it then in August. You'll get $5 um, for every coupon code that you accumulate, okay? <clears throat> so let's get started. I've got all the parts and pieces here to make my card, and the stamp set that I'm going to be using is this adorable Zany Zebras. So it is so stinking cute, and it is a rubber uh, mounted cling mount stamp set. So that is what we're going to use. The paper, the patterned paper that I'm using is from this collection, and it is the Artistry Blooms designer series paper and um, it always gives you the colors that they use in the back there so you can go and match up um, if you choose to to your cardstock and markers and things so that is on there so what I have started with is an eight and a half inch circle now you could use a plate or whatever but to get our basic card size of four and a quarter by five and a half, um, you'll want to start with an eight and a half inch circle. And I used one of these. So um, you can probably pick this up at the dollar store if you don't have one. I'm guessing they probably have. I've had this in my stamp room forever. I hardly use it, but 
you know, when you want to do a circle to a certain size, this is the perfect thing and it worked perfect for me. So that's how I got my eight and a half inch circle. And I did one to keep as a pattern and I put it on just a plain piece of white cardstock. And then I also made patterns for the inside pockets that, and you'll see as we go along. Um, so I cut these patterns because I was making a bunch of these cards. So if that is going to be the case for you as well, you'll want to um, just have these patterns because especially for the eight and a half inch circle, you know, then all you have to do is trace it onto your paper. So um, that is how I started. So I've got my eight and a half inch circle. I also have a piece of four and a quarter by one inch of the same patterned paper and I scored it right down the middle at a half inch. I have a piece of scrap or leftover, whatever. This is what I'm gonna be stamping my little zebras on. And then for the pocket, or the cards that will slide into the pockets, um, I'm gonna go ahead and give you the measurements now and then um, I will post these as well with this post on Facebook. And I will also put it below the video um, if you're watching this on YouTube. So for the background, for the background color cardstock on the large card, that one is four and an eighth by four and a half. And then your layer piece for on top is three and seven eighths by four and a quarter. Okay, and then the smaller one the background color part is three and a quarter by three and three quarters. And the layer piece for on top is three inches by three and a half. And for the smaller one, that's where I came in with my patterns here to get the curve. And how I did that was um, when it was the rectangle, I just, let's use this one for an example. I just put my circle up so that it looked even, and then I took my pencil and traced around to give it that curve. And that's how I created the two patterned pieces for both of these layers for the smaller card. But the bigger card, I just leave, I leave it. I don't round the corners. That would be up to you if you wanted to round the corners on that one also, but I didn't feel the need to do that. Okay, so here's the biggest part of assembling or making this card. You've got your eight and a half inch circle and you can decide, you know, which, which color you want on the outside of your card and which color you want on the inside. I want this to sort of be the main part of what you see on my card. But the easiest way to score this to do your folding is to use a scoring tool. Um, you could do it on your your cutter, like like on um, if you have the Stampin' Up paper trimmer, which you can also score with. You can do it on this, but I'm going to explain to you why it's easier. I find to do it on a scoreboard. And if you have Stampin' Ups, that's perfect. I I already had this one, or I would, I would definitely have Stampin' Ups scoreboard because they have places up here with little pegs that go in to mark. So if you're doing a lot of scoring, like making a bunch of cards, you can mark where your score lines are, and it's just easier. Hi, Elaine. Thanks for joining in. The other thing you wanna keep in mind when you get ready to score is if your pattern or your paper has a pattern to it, make sure you have the pattern. If you want one, like this one has dots sort of, but they're in a vertical or a horizontal pattern. If you didn't want them that way, you could always turn it a little bit, but just make sure the pattern of your paper is how you want it on your card. Okay, are you ready? So we're gonna come in and we are going to 
score the side one side at two and an eighth okay so we're gonna score and I'm doing this on the patterned paper here so I'm not pressing quite as firmly as I would if I were doing it on card cardstock while this is a heavier paper than a lot of patterned papers it's still lighter weight than cardstock so we've got that score line at two and an eighth and then we're going to come over here to six and three eighths so one two three and score now what this is going to do is going to give us our four and a quarter wide card so now that I've made those two score lines, I want to fold one of them so that I can get a flat line up here to butt up to the top of my scoreboard and to the side. And this is what I was talking about, why it's so much easier to score on a scoreboard because you've got this when you're using a circle you've got these edges to butt it up against so that it's not going to go anywhere and you can make your score lines be straight okay so i want i think i want the lighter color here at um the top of my card so i'm going to go ahead because it'll be easier for me to fold that side and get it at the top and side and then i'm going to score at the five and a half mark so that gives us when this other side's folded that will give us our four and a quarter and scoring it at the five and a half will give us our five and a half um at the bottom and once i get this part all put put together you'll see um why so that's all the scoring we're gonna do so let me put this aside so the circle Elaine I made with this it's a compass right isn't that what these are called and so I pulled it out to um, I don't you know I don't remember how these work that well but i think i pulled it out to four and a quarter i'm looking here maybe it's four and a half let me see okay so i think it's four and a half you pull it out to and then you know spin it around and make your circle because you want an eight and a half inch circle is the goal so if you have something that already ma measures eight and a half inches to trace around that's what you need is an eight and a half inch circle and so i cut this one out on um, plain white cardstock so i can have it as a template and then i just you know laid it down on my patterned paper and drew around it and cut it out so that is that okay all right so now you you've got your score lines so just fold them in and then here's the bottom one and that folds up so we've got those scores and then we are going to cut from the outside of this one into the where the other one intersects and those will be the only two cut marks that we have to make on this so let me just go ahead here and like i said i will um, after the video i will post the measurements and stuff somewhere um uh, probably as a comment with the video and if you're watching on youtube I will post it below the video there so this is where you can decide you know um, what part you want showing most um, on the front of your card and this is how I want it 
for for my card I'm I want the the pink side to the inside so these two flaps are going to fold in the bottom's going to come up you can glue those at the bottom if you want um and I'm going to tell you another option that you can have here after I kind of fold it and you can see what we're working with, okay? So this is going to go up. So you've got that pocket and then this is going to be a pocket. These fold over. And if things aren't lining up just quite right, just butts with it, you know? Just bring it to where you need it and use your phone folder and give it a score. Okay, so this is what, it's a, it makes a triple pocket. So you've got this pocket, this one's gonna be a pocket, and then this one down here is what I don't insert a card in, but I leave it for a um, gift card or to put money or whatever. So here's the other option. So this is the piece um, in the beginning that I said you'll need also out of your pattern paper. It's a four and a quarter, the width of the card. So four and a quarter by an inch. Now, that's to make it the way I'm gonna make it today. But there's an option. If you, cause let me just show you how it's gonna be. And I can use whichever side of this. I'll probably use that side of it, okay? Because this will come down at the bottom and glue there to finish this off, okay? And then it's got, you know, it looks like that on the back. If you don't want it to look like that, if you don't want this lip to be on the back, what you can do is instead of making an inch wide, make it a half inch wide and about another inch longer. And you can put that across the bottom like this before you glue, do any gluing, you'll put it across the bottom and wrap it around and then you won't have any lip on the back. So I hope that makes sense. I don't really care that there's a lip on the back, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do it, and I've made them both ways. I'm just gonna do it that way today. So here's what we're gonna do. I had been gluing these flaps down, but really it's not necessary to do that because we're gonna glue this one on the sides here, and I'm just gonna use, um, I like the, the liquid adhesive. I think it gives a stronger hold on this, and plus, you don't want to take up too much of the width here and prevent your card from sliding in and out. I don't know why my voice is sounding goofy today, but probably because I was listening to music and singing before I came on here. So I've probably wore my voice out. I'm guessing. Okay, so you're just gonna put glue on the edges there and fold that up and just hold it in place a little bit. So that glue sets. Ooh, I like these colors together. I think that's so pretty. I love colors. Okay, so you're gonna get those glued and then you're gonna just glue the bottoms of these two little flaps. Oh, there goes my phone. My phone has been ringing off the hook the, this week. No calls from anybody that I know. So I'm thinking it must be a lot of political calling or whatever. So I'm gonna hold those in place for just a few seconds. Do, 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 do. Okay. 
glued my fingers to it. I'm just gonna bring this in. Okay, so now let's take a look and see, do I want this on the bottom or do I want it like this? I think I'm gonna do that. So um, I'm gonna put glue on the back first, the back flap. And just line that up to the score line there. And now, okay, the one thing about the front, glue it so there's no glue here in the middle. It will just help, you know, so that whatever gets um, put down in there, if it's money or a gift card or whatever, even you could put, you could put whatever will fit in there. If you wanted to put a candy in there or whatever you can put in there, but it's perfect for a gift card or money. But I would say try not to put your glue there. So what I'm going to do, I just kind of hold my finger so I can see where I don't want glue and then just go from there. And then the same with this over here, just go up and put your glue there. Well, I'm still not being able to see comments on my iPad. I don't know what the deal is with that. I can see them on my phone. Okay, so there is the base of our card. Isn't that cool that you start with a circle and you end up with three pockets? I love it. Okay, so now for the cards. And I will give you these um, measurements again real quick. We've got two cards, one will slip in there, one will slip in here, and then again, that pocket is for gift card or money. So the larger card, the base uh, piece measures four and an eighth by four and a half, and the white layer, three and seven eighths by four and a quarter. Okay, so those will go together. The small is um, three and a quarter by three and three quarters. And the white layer is three by three and a half. And then if you missed me talking about this in the beginning, um, for the small layer, I curve the tops. The bigger card I leave, I just leave as is but the small layer, I kind of like to curve the tops. So I made my own patterns for those two pieces. And what I did was I just used my big circle and I brought it in and just took it a, down a little bit like that and took my pencil and made a mark. And so I created patterns so that I don't have to go through this process every time. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do that now. So there is that one. And there we go. And I don't know why I like to use 
a little bit bigger pair of scissors to trim trim this off with rather than my smaller ones because I don't have to open and close my scissors as much. I think that's why. So there is that. And there is that. And I would suggest whatever you are going to stamp on these, to stamp on them before you glue them to the background, the back pieces, because if you mess up, you can flip it over and do it on the other side or whatever. Um, I'm sure we all have done that before, and it's like, oh, man. Now, now it's all glued. Now I have to cut two pieces of paper instead of one. Okay, so I am going to do um, the happy birthday and the kick up your heels. So there is that, and there is that. Let's see, I think I'll do happy birthday black. I'm gonna pull this just a little bit closer to me so I can hopefully, oops, I almost dropped it. Get it somewhat straight and even. Hi, Kathy. So there's happy birthday. your heels let's see I'm gonna also bring it's time to celebrate Pick up your heels. It's time to celebrate. Let's do it like that. Cute. And then in this set there are some little stars and there are the there's the party hat. I'm going to use those plus two of these zebras, but for right now, I'm going to use the little stars. Just to make this a little more festive. We'll do some on this card also. Happy birthday. There we go. And I've got some of my color blends over here. So let's just color in some of those stars.
my gosh, you guys, it was only 55 degrees here yesterday. It's been chilly, and we had a lot of fog last night. It's warmer, nicer today, which is good. So a far cry from the weather a lot of you all, excuse me, have been having where you're at. I would appreciate a little warmer weather around here for sure. All right, those are done. So I made a dozen, each one being different of these cards uh, on a special request from one of my nieces. And they're a little bit time consuming depending on how much decorating you do of them. And I did quite a bit on the ones I made for her. And so it took me a good while, <laughs> especially with designing each one, you know trying to figure out what theme I wanted on each one. Um, it took me a while to get a dozen of these done, but I did. And um, if you want to take a look at them, I posted, I did a video showing each one of them and it's on my YouTube channel, so you can see them all there. I put it on there yesterday. So now these are gonna have pulls on them. They can be ribbon, they can be, um, you can do a circle and do a half circle that you glue at the top. Your pull can be whatever you want it to be. We're gonna do, um, I think we're gonna do ribbon on these today, I'm not sure. I put ribbon on the first ones I made, but I'm doing, I've got a different color scheme going on for this one, so it's gonna be a little bit different. So there is that part, and now we're gonna be doing the decorating part. So I'm gonna bring in two of these cute zebras. I love this stamp set, it's so cute. And I'm just gonna stamp them with the Memento Black. There's that little cutie patootie. And then this little guy. There he is, so cute. And then, uh, the party hat. Because these guys are going to a birthday party. So they each need a hat. Okay, here we go. So now 
We could leave them to be black and white zebras, but what fun would that be? We are going to make these guys colorful. So I have got dark Highland Heather here, and I'm gonna make their hooves that color. and their tails, and their muzzles. I know these aren't horses, they're zebras, but kind of like horses. It, have you ever felt a horse's muzzle? We had horses when I was growing up and it is just, like the softest, squishiest. I love their muzzles. Okay, there we go. Now I went out of the line a little bit on that one, so I'm just gonna get my color lifter and see if I can clean that up a little bit because I don't like that. I might have to go over it a couple of times, but I think I can probably clean it up. Okay, so then I'm going to, oh look, it bled a little bit into his mouth also. So let me just, oops, wrong end. Hi, Jana. Let me clean that up a little bit because I want his mouth to be pink in there, not purple. let that dry before I do the pink. Okay, let's get busy with some stripes. This one is Light Melon Mambo. So nothing fancy. Just giving them some colorful stripes. And we have Dark Pool Party. And Light Mango Melody. Oh, I forgot to do his back legs. I mean his front legs. Better do that. And let's see, light granny apple green. And 
And then I'm just going to fill in here, go back and do some yellow there, maybe a little yellow there, and we'll do a little bit of this color here. All right, so there's one zebra. Let me put a little pink here inside the ear. And we'll do this one and his mouth. No boring zebras for us. They're going to be colorful. And let's see. Maybe we'll just do that there. Almost done with having to watch me color. Oops, I missed some here, didn't I? And then dark pool party. Guess we don't have any more over there. I should have made that one green. Oh well. No biggie. Okay, did I get all the stripes colored? I think so. And then I'm just going to take light smoky slate and just come in and do a little bit here so it's not so stark white. Just do a little bit of shading, nothing fancy at all. I'd like to have some of those really fancy coloring skills, and I know if I practiced it, I could, but I don't want the stress of having to feel like things have to be really perfect. I mean, stamping is my fun thing. I don't want, I don't want stress, and making it feel like it has to be perfect is a little stressful to me. So we're just doing the fun. And it's going to turn out cute no matter what. That's what I think. All right, and then we need to color these party hats.
no rhyme or reason, just getting color on there. Let's see here, what colors am I missing? I can do what color am I missing here let me pull them over here that might help I've got this one this one this one I've got all the colors so I'll just pull oh I don't have the um here there we go Okay, now I just need to cut these out really quick. And these are pretty easy to cut out. They would be so much easier if there were dies, of course, but there are not dies for this set. So we are just going to fuss about it and fussy cut them out. Fussy cutting is not my favorite thing, I can tell you. Some people love it, and it's okay, but it's not my favorite thing. Obviously, people who do those silhouette things, and there's a name that starts with an S, which I can't pronounce. They must love to fuzzy cut. The other thing I don't really enjoy doing is where you take all those little paper strips and twirl them up with the little tool. What's that called? Um, I can't think of what it's called. And then you put all the little twirly duck papers together to create things and pictures. I did a class just because the gal that was teaching it had come to some of my classes, so I wanted to support her back. And that was uh, one of the things that she loved to do was that. Quilling, that's what it's called. Yeah, I am not a fan of quilling. All right, there's one zebra down. One to go. The decorating of these cards is the fun, fun part. Once you've got all your parts and pieces colored and all that, decorating them. And when I made the 12, that's what I did is I made all the card bases and the insert cards and got all of that done. And I had in mind what the theme was for each card but I got all the bases done, and then I went back and did all the decorating of each one of them. And that was really fun. Almost done. My little dog Lacey is snoring over here, whatever you want to call it. She's a kind of a noisy sleeper. She must be dreaming.
almost done, you guys. Okay, now I just need to do those little party hats. Awkward silence. Okay, here we go. Bring in some dimensionals here. This little guy's going to be kicking up his heels. Now, it doesn't matter if stuff is, you know, overlapping into this area. You know, it just will cover up the um, gift card or money or whatever a little bit, but it will also help to hold it in there. So um, all of the ones I've made have had things overlapping. So I'm just seeing because I like to uh, glue down a little bit and pop up a little bit. So I'm going to pop some of this guy up here a little bit. And then I'm going to glue a little bit. You just want to make sure that you don't get any of your adhesives into the pocket part of the card there. So that is just the only thing that you need to be watchful of. And let's put a little party hat on there. Party animals. Now this one, he's not going to be overlapping much, so I don't have to be too careful of where my dimensionals are going here. Get a little party hat on this one. There we go. And let's see. I have the in color enamel dots. We need to make it just a little more festive.
my fingers are sticky. There we go. So there is that. And then we need some poles. Let me look at, oh yeah, I forgot. I did bring my ribbon over here. So I've got my little ribbon box that I made here. And if you missed out on that, you can scroll down my page or go to YouTube and you will find the video to make this ribbon box. And so I've got the, I think it's called Swiss Dot. I'm not positive. But anyway, this dotted ribbon, which is in the annual catalog. And I'm just going to cut some of this off to make our little poles on our card. Okay, let me just pull these out. And I like to bring my ruler in. Where is it? And just find the center because when things are off center, doesn't that bug you? It bugs me. Okay, so let's just find the middle. So right there. right there So let's see, I'm trying to decide do I want to use the same ribbon to tie around it or maybe that crinkle ribbon might be kind of fun to tie around it. I think I'll just cut a little piece of it off and see, see what it looks like. This crinkle ribbon does not make very, um, it's so soft. It doesn't make the stiffest of bows by any means. So I'm just going to knot it. It's super soft and you can color it any color with your blends or probably a regular marker, but the blends the color doesn't bleed um, when you have it on there and it dries super fast. Plus it does give some body to this ribbon. It makes it just a little bit stiffer. Um, so it does make, make better bows if you color it. And then let's see, I just need to trim up that. There we go, cute. So there is one. We'll do the same for this one. And then I will show you the first card I made because it's the same, but it's just, and I used the same papers, but I used a different piece, so it's a different color.
if you haven't joined um, a group that I started on Facebook called Our, Our Crafty Creations, be sure to request to join. Um, it's for all kinds of crafting, and there's a lot of paper crafting card making on there, but then other crafts as well, um, which is fun because most of us all do other things besides just card making. And I like the inspiration we get from other people sharing what they make. Okay, there we go. I think that turned out cute. And let me bring in the first one I did. So the same thing, just a different color. And that one I did, happy birthday, kick up your heels. I think I did a little different on this one. Oh, kick up your heels, it's time to celebrate. And this one I did, it's time to celebrate on that card. And this one is the happy birthday. So the same, just a little different. But it's a really fun card to make, so don't get intimidated by the whole circle thing. Um, and if you missed any of it, uh, I will be posting this to my stamping page on Facebook and my YouTube channel which is also Jana Stamps. They're both Jana Stamps. So you can find it on either one of those. And I will give the measurements again for the inside cards. And then the circle is just an eight and a half inch circle. And I made it um, with this, a compass, right? I think that's what they're called. So I'm sure Dollar Tree probably has these. Or if not, I'm, I'm sure they don't cost very much. You could try measuring a paper plate. I don't know what they measure out to, but they might be the right size. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for joining me, you guys. I really appreciate it. If you um, don't mind sharing my video, that would be greatly appreciated. And here is the host code again for uh, July and the address to my shopping site where you can find these cute papers, ribbons, and stamps. Okay, thanks you guys, have a great weekend. I'll see you next Friday. Happy stamping, bye-bye.